went through and we were sorting the, the individuals for ripeness on the females and the ripeness would be determined if the eggs would come out of the female easily or if they're really tight in there we call that fish a green fish and basically we're going through and getting the right females putting eggs in inside of the bowl and then we're using the milk from the male fish to help fertilize them um, one of the things that we do is we do split each female and fertilize that female with two different males and what we're doing is trying to help increase our genetic diversity because we have a low number of returning fish to our system so we want to try to get as much genetics out there um, to increase just overall population uh, we have to take eggs and it's a mitigation process or we take the eggs because of the lost habitat from up above uh, when Lake Comanche Dam was put in here it stopped the upward migration of both both of the fall run Chinook and our steelhead and that's a lot of valuable spawning habitat that was taken away and without habitat you can't reproduce so we're here to mimic and reproduce the fish for that lost area up above here so on our steelhead what we do is we hold those fish for almost a year and then to help get them past some of the areas for high losses we truck them down a little bit lower into the Macomb River and then we'll release them down there and typically we try to wait for a larger storm event and when the water dirties up and what that does is help against predation if the predators can't see the fish they can't hone in on them as easily along with storm events and dirty water you get a rise in water levels and hopefully it flushes the fish out of the system a little bit faster so they don't hang around and and be susceptible to predation or water pumps or whatever it may be birds um, all of it takes takes a little bit of a toll and with our salmon production, we also do the same, but we take those fish and we use a net pin acclimation and we put all of our production or almost all of our production down there, give them a good two hour, two and a half to three hour acclimation in these really large net pins. And then uh, another aid, a group goes out and will release those fish when the tide gets going really fast. They'll release them out in the center of the, the bay down there. And in theory that they'll be washed out with the high ripping tide out moving outward. Yeah. For our Chinook salmon, one of the key processes uh, or key things that really helps us out is the coated wire tag recovery. And as I was explaining, every one of every four fish gets this tag in its head of our Chinook production. And it really allows us to understand when those fish return what and how successful that planting location or that plant site was. And it allows us to to go through and assess, did the fish stray? Did they show up at a different facility? Did the fish hone in and really come back to our, our facility like they should? Um, and then of course we have to go through and, and use different water year types. If we have a lot of water going out, we have a lot of scent going out to return our, to bring our fish back home to us. The reason why we do hold these fish for about that five to six month period here is so that they imprint our water and it basically locks in um, the exact scent from my system here. So there's chemistry coming down and different elements coming down from the water up above us and minerals that make up the composition of the water. When it comes through my facility, now we're adding in the scent of the other food, the fish waste and so on that goes through and out here. So those fish literally key on that were reared in this facility, they key on that exact scent and they'll want to return to that exact scent, not 200 yards down the river, not 400 yards above us but to this exact spot right here. And that's why they come up the ladder and into our facility.